Hello, everybody, and welcome back again. Today we're in section 3.5, and we're going to talk about the five number summary and how to draw a box plot, also called a box and whisker plot. And I'll show you how to interpret the box plot. Here we go. Let's start with the five number summary. Now the five number summary of a set of data consists of the smallest value, Q1, the median, Q3, and the largest value. And we just write them all in a row like this. So the five number summary is just minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and the maximum. Notice that by definition these numbers will always be in order from smallest to largest and also notice that we don't even bother to put commas between them or anything. We won't label them, we won't put commas between them, just spaces. Now we have already looked at quartiles on the graphing calculator, but I thought we'd just look at it one more time. Here we have a data set that contains 21 values, and I have already entered those 21 values into my list one in my calculator. So now what I'm gonna do is press stat, go over to calc, and then run my one variable stats command. Again, this is the old operating system, so I don't have to tell it what list, but if you have the new operating system, just be sure to tell it what list you're using and leave frequency list blank. And then we're going to press enter. And we have mean and standard deviation on the first screen. Scroll down, and here we have minimum Q1, Q2, which we also call the median, Q3, and the maximum. So we could just write down that our five number summary is 19.95, 26.055, 30.95, 37.24, 54.63. Now once we have the five number summary, that can be used to create a graph called a box plot and it's also called a box and whisker plot. Let me show you one here. So first of all, for a box and whisker plot, we need a number line, and we need the number line to extend from at least the largest value in the data set to the smallest value in the data set. Now this is the box part of the box plot, and the vertical lines here represent Q1, Q2, and Q3. So the line for Q2 will always be somewhere in the middle of the box. It may not be exactly in the center, but this one you can see is a little off to the side. That's fine. And then these brackets represent the lower fence and the upper fence. And these are the whiskers. So the left whisker extends from Q1 down to the smallest value that's still inside the fence and the right whisker extends from Q3 up to the largest value that's still inside the fence. And then if there are any outliers, remember they will be outside the fences, and any outliers in the data set are denoted by an asterisk. So if you look at the right whisker, because there are no values past this largest value, this is the maximum value in our data set. But on the left side, there are outliers outside the fence. So this smallest outlier is the minimum value in our data set. And this value is the smallest data value that's still inside the fence. And what we're going to do in the next few slides is learn how to draw our own box plots. And I'll also pull up the calculator and show you how to graph a box plot on the calculator. So here are the steps for drawing a box plot on your own. At some point, you'll need to know the upper and lower fences. You can go ahead and do that first if you want to, or you can actually wait until you need them. But the lower fence, remember, is going to be Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. The upper fence is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. And IQR stands for interquartile range, and it's just Q3 minus Q1. Now you'll need to draw a number line long enough to include the minimum and maximum values of your data set. And then you'll insert vertical lines at Q1, the median, and Q3. And then you'll enclose those vertical lines in a box. Label the upper and lower fences. It's okay if your number line does not accommodate both fences. Sometimes 
It may be that one fence doesn't show up on the number line. That's fine. And then draw a line from Q1 down to the smallest data value that's still inside the fence. And then draw a line from Q3 up to the largest data value that's still inside the fence. Those are the whiskers. And then any data values that are outside the fence, mark those with an asterisk because they are outliers. Now here is the data that we used in example one. And I've copied down here the five number summary that we already found for that data set. And now we're going to draw a box plot for this five number summary. So first of all, we need a number line. Notice that the minimum value is 19.95 and the maximum value is 54.63. Now there's no way that we're going to be able to draw a number line that accounts for two decimal places. It's just not possible. And as a matter of fact, for this data going from 19 point something to 54 point something, I think it's probably going to be best if we just try to count by fives. So we need a number line that starts at a number small enough to hold 19.95 and goes to a number big enough to hold 54.63. So let's just have it go from 15 to 55. And that will cover the minimum to maximum values for us. Now let's go ahead and draw the box because that's the easiest thing to do next. The left and right sides of the box are Q1 and Q3 and then Q2 will go between them. So let's put a vertical line at 26.055, which should be somewhere in here. And then another vertical line at 30.95, so you know, about 31. And then another vertical line at 37.24, so you know, just about 37. And now we'll draw a top and a bottom on this box. And now we need to draw our whiskers, but we really can't draw the whiskers until we found out where the fences need to go. So let's go ahead and calculate the IQR. IQR is Q3 minus Q1, which for us is 11.185. And then the lower fence is going to be Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So for us, that is 9.278. And we'll put that here on our graph. Now notice that I did not draw my number line down to a place that would accommodate the 9.278, and that's okay. What's important on the box plot is not the fences. The fences really are a little extra. What's important for the box plot is that we have the quartile showing and that we have a place for both whiskers and any outliers. So if one of the fences doesn't show up, that's fine. So this one, I think I still can squeeze it in here, but I did not label a place on the number line for it. That's okay. And then the upper fence is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. And that comes out 54.018, which of course is here. So let me go ahead and put my fence there. Now I'm looking at the five number summary and I see that the maximum value is a little bigger than the upper fence. So I know I have at least one outlier. So we'll handle that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and draw our whiskers. So I know that the left whisker goes from Q1 down to the smallest value that's still inside the fence. Well, the smallest data value in the whole set is 19.95 and that definitely is inside the fence. So let's draw a whisker about down to here. And for the right whisker, since I know I have an outlier, I'm going to need to stop my right whisker at the largest value that's still inside the fence. So we'll have to look through our data set for the largest value that's still less than 54.018. So if you look through here, I believe the largest value you can find that's still less than 54.018 is this 49.17 right here. So let's draw our right whisker up to 49.17. And then the only number I see that's bigger than the upper fence is this 54.63, which was our max. So let's go ahead and put an asterisk right outside the upper fence for our 54.63. Now we're going to get the calculator to draw that same box plot for us. I've already got our data still stored in list one. So I'll just show it to you here. 
These are all the numbers from the table that we used before. And now what I'm going to do is go to my stat plot. I believe the last time we used stat plot, we were drawing a histogram. Well, this time we're going to change it to a box plot. So press second, stat plot. And now we are back at the stat plot screen. So you can choose to use any of the plots you want. I only ever use plot one because I really only need one at a time. So let's go ahead and press enter. Now plot one is already turned on, but notice that it is set to draw a histogram and I don't want a histogram of this data. What I want of this data is a box plot. Now there are two kinds of box plots that our calculator will draw. The first kind, notice the little dots here, the first kind will draw a box plot that marks where the outliers are. That's what we want to do. The second kind of box plot does not mark the outliers. So it just has the upper whisker go up to the maximum value and the lower whisker go down to the minimum value. And you cannot tell what the outliers are on this kind. So our book uses the kind where you can see the outliers. So what you'll want to do is press down arrow and now you might feel like you could down arrow again, but if you down arrow again, you're going to go down here to the X list control. And what we want is to right arrow until we have this box plot selected. So now right arrow until that box plot is selected and then press enter. And make sure that your X list says list one or wherever you stored your data. By default, it's list one, and that's where I have my data, so I'm going to leave that. And then it's going to use this kind of marker for the outliers, but you could change it to something different if you wanted to. And now let's go ahead and graph. And notice you can just see the left whisker of my box plot here. So to get the calculator to zoom in on the graph for us, what we're going to do is zoom stat. So press the zoom button and then you can arrow down or if you remember that zoom stat is option 9 you can just go ahead and press 9 and there is our box plot and now it's hard to tell what these numbers are down here so if you would like the calculator to tell you what each one means remember you can just press the trace button and it'll tell you that the minimum is 19.95 and then I will right arrow and it tells me Q1 right arrow again Q2 or median, right arrow again Q3, right arrow again it tells me the largest value that's inside the upper fence and right arrow one more time it will tell me the value of that outlier. And so that's how you draw a box plot on the calculator. Here is just another data set for us to practice with and on this one, actually, we'll go ahead and find our own five number summary without using the calculator because this is such a small data set. And this is the kind of thing you might need to end up doing on a test. So I want to make sure you can do it without fully relying on the calculator. First, let's find the median. Now, if you count, there are 19 numbers in this data set and 19 plus 1 is 20 and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So the median is going to be the 10th value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the median, or Q2. And now Q1 will be the median of the lower half. So in the lower half, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 values. 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so the Q1 is the fifth value. And then Q3 is the median of the upper half. So there are 10 numbers here as well, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this will be Q3. Now just double check yourself by making sure there's the same amount of values before and after each quartile. So I have four values less than Q1, four values between Q1 and Q2, four between Q2 and Q3, four that are above Q3. So these quartiles are good. Now, Let's go ahead and find the interquartile range. That'll be 31 minus 25, which is 6. And then the lower fence will be 16, and the upper fence will be 40. 
So anything that's not between 16 and 40 is considered an outlier. I see here that I have a couple of values that are less than 16, so these two will be outliers, but I do not have any values that are greater than 40, so there won't be any outliers on that end. And now our number line needs to go from 12 to 32. I thought it would be convenient to count by twos, so I just started at 12 and counted by twos all the way up to 32. And now I'm going to put a mark for Q1 at 25, so right here, and then a mark for 29 right here, and then a mark for 31 right here. And so those represent Q1, Q2, and Q3. And we'll just go ahead and draw a top and a bottom to close in our box. And now we need to draw the whiskers. So the upper whisker, I guess, is the easiest one to do. The upper whisker is just going to go from Q3 to the maximum value, which is 32. So there's our upper whisker. Now the lower whisker can only go down to the largest value that's still inside the fence. And remember, the fence is going to go at 16. So the largest value that's still inside the fence is 22. Let's draw our lower whisker down to 22, and then we'll put our lower fence at 16, and then we have outliers at both 12 and 14. And there is our box plot for this data set. Now this one's a little different, but I'm just going to throw it in here in case you see a question like this on a test where they don't want to give you the whole data set, but they want to see if you know what to do with the five number summary. So here we have a five number summary, and it says the largest value inside the upper fence is 75, and the only outlier is 80. Well, let's start by finding the IQR and the fences. So the IQR would be Q3 minus Q1, which is 64 minus 56, which is eight, then the lower fence is going to be 56 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So the lower fence is 44. And the upper fence is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So the upper fence is 76. Now any numbers that are not between 44 and 76 would be outliers. But they told us the only outlier is 80. So now let's make our number line go from the smallest value to the largest value. And again, I just counted by fives. So I know that I'm going to need vertical lines at 56, 58, and 64, and I'll close those in a box just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw the whiskers. The lower whisker is going to go from Q1 down to the smallest data value, which is 50. And the upper whisker is going to go from Q3 up to the largest value that's still inside the fence, which they told us was 75. So I'll draw the upper whisker up to 75. Then I'll go ahead and put my fences on. I believe even though this only goes down to 50, I could put 44 here and it's still believable. And the upper fence would go here at 76. And then the only outlier is at 80. And so there is our box plot for this example. Now I do have one more thing to show you about box plots, and that is that you can get an idea of the shape of a distribution by looking at the box plot. If a data set is right skewed, then the right side of the box and the right whisker will be longer. If the data is left skewed, then the left side of the box and the left whisker will be longer. So here we have a histogram with a distribution that is right skewed, and you can see that the right side of the box and the right whisker are longer. That's because the more this tail gets pulled out, the longer that corresponding whisker will have to be. With a symmetrical data set, it may not be exact, but the median will be pretty well in the center of the box, and then the whiskers will be about the same length. That's what you're looking for. And here we have a left skewed distribution and you can see that the left side of the box and the left whisker are longer.